Good morning everyone and welcome to my very wet garden but this rain is nothing compared to what's forecast for tomorrow. We've already received flood warnings and people are making preparation today but I guess all we can really do now is wait and see what happens because none of us can control mother nature. Fortunately where I live our property is a bit more elevated so we should be fine for tomorrow but I just want to give you an idea of what's going on here in New South Wales this weekend. It's just crazy always it just blows my mind when I look back at this time a year ago when we were in drought everything was like dust and now it's the complete extreme. So I managed between showers to show you around the garden. There's a lot going on in this update. We'll take a look at a tomato that looks like a capsicum, another unusual variety of corn, and we'll head inside to make some edible flour rice paper rolls. Plus, we'll also take a look at um, how my seedlings are coming on. Just give you a bit of an update on that too. So please just sit back and relax for a few minutes and let me show you around. Here I've got an unusual variety of corn to show you. The suckers from the passion fruit vine are trying to take over this plant. I'll just grab this one here, pull it off. Oh, it's stuck on it. Come on, let's do this. Yes, got it. It's looking kind of gross, <laughs> covered in mould, which is probably due to all the rain we've had over the last few weeks. You might notice that the cobs are really quite small. So this variety is called Mini Blue Popcorn. It's a maize corn, which you can harvest and you can either, like the glass gem corn, you can um, grind it up the kernels to make a flour or with this one you can also dry out the kernels and use it to make popcorn let's see if you can get in here it's got a lot of layers on it oh here we go the grand reveal <laughs> there we go I think this is really pretty. Um, so it's my first year growing this variety. I sowed the seeds back in autumn time and I'm just harvesting it now, which is coming up to mid autumn or fall here in New South Wales, Australia. The kernels on it are so small. It must make teeny popcorn. It looks like a little bead. I'm gonna leave this on the windowsill in our sunroom and let it dry for a couple of weeks before I even consider trying to make popcorn with it. When it's ready to go, I'll share the process with you. I'm now down in the fan garden and look what's happened since last week. The pineapple sage growing here has started to flower. I have mentioned a few times before that this is a wonderful plant to make tea out of. You can use the leaves and these pretty red flowers. But this plant isn't the reason why I'm down here. I'll give you a clue. It's got something to do with this yellow capsicum. So if you remember back to when I was sowing my tomato seeds, I was trying out a new variety to me called yellow stuffer. These tomatoes look very similar to this yellow capsicum. Here's one in the fruit protector bag. I'm going to leave it in there a little bit longer but I do have a smaller one a bit further down that I can pick off now. You probably can't tell by the size of this one. It's pretty small but this variety is a beefsteak tomato and if I hold them side by side like this you can see that they both have a ribbed exterior. I just removed the top off this yellow stuffer and if we take a look inside you can see that it's almost hollow. I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting with this and see what fillings I can put in there and try and roast it whole in the oven. And speaking of experimenting, here's the recipe that I mentioned last week when it comes to those edible Busy Lizzy flowers. I'm out in the front garden and I've just picked this plateful of blooms from the flower patch of Busy Lizzie's or Impatience. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to head inside and share 
the dish with you there because it's just starting to pour down rain. I'm making edible flour rice paper rolls. The ingredients that you will need are sheets of rice paper, mango, I was being a bit stingy today and bought them in a can but fresh is always best. Next some creamed rice, this will be part of the filling and finally your edible flowers which I rinsed to make sure that they were clean. I don't usually buy canned mango. The flavour certainly isn't as good as what you would find in the fresh veg and fruit section of your supermarket. But when they're out of season, they can be quite expensive. I place some of this in a squeezy bottle for later. Next, put some warm water in a bowl and grab yourself one of the rice paper sheets. Place it into the water and after about 30 seconds, you can remove it gently. No matter how many times I do this, I still manage to mess it up. Everything's sticking together. If you have any tips, please put them in the comments below. I need your help. Now it's time to place down your flowers. It's important to remember to put them petal side down. Arrange them along the centre of the sheet. I use some of the more brighter colours. They'll stand out more later on. Next, place some creamed rice on top of them. Then grab yourself the squeezy bottle and put some of this mango sauce on top. Now it's time to create your parcels. Fold the two ends first and then the two sides. To make it less sticky, you can slightly moisten your fingertips with water. Try to be delicate with this because they can easily tear. Flip it around. There has to be an easier way of doing this. Anyway, serve it with some more of that mango sauce. I know there's a lot of rice in this dish, but I promise it does taste really good. I forgot to show you this last week. It's the start of my seed sowing for autumn winter here in New South Wales, Australia. I only sowed them about a week and a half ago and they have grown so much already. So starting off here, I have a few Asian greens. This is Choi Sun Purple. Down here, I have some Bok Choi Purple. And then finally, this one, one of my favorites, Mizuna Purple. So during winter time here, I tend to cook a lot of like Asian soups and I really love bok choy. Um, I use so much of this, so I'm gonna make sure that I have plenty of it growing in the garden. You can see there, there's <laughs> so many seeds. Um, I just chuck them all in there. I'll divide them up and then plant them out when the garden beds are ready. Some of the flowers are Bishop's Lace, Cornflower Pink, Oh, look at this, I just noticed. Some of the tops of these seedlings have been munched on already, probably by the slugs and snails. How annoying, oh look over here, they're only little stumps. I'll have to sow some more of those seeds and I'll probably come out tonight now and check around here to see if I can find any snails. Now finally, in these two trays, I've got Calandula, a variety called Pacific Beauty, where they have lovely shades of yellow and orange. Look at this one here, you can still see the seed attached to the top. I do love growing these cold hardy annuals here during the cooler months because they add a splash of happiness out here in the garden during winter. Here's some footage of these calendula flowers growing in my garden. You're actually looking at a few different varieties that I've grown over the years. I remember in particular being really happy with this flower display of the blue Dutch irises and this variety of calendula called orange porcupine. I've also got these three trays. Um, so in the first one here, I have a few different types of peas. The first two are edible called sugar snap peas and then the rest are sweet peas. A lot of people suggest that you should direct sow your peas because they have very delicate root systems that could be easily damaged. But unfortunately, I don't have any room at the moment to put them out in the garden. So I'm getting them started in here. And you can see there, there's some lovely 
white roots sticking out at the bottom they seem happy so far so good and as long as I'm careful with them when I remove them from this tray and put them into the ground I think they'll be absolutely fine this is something I've done with them before and it's worked fine in this one here there's a couple of rows of snow peas which have popped through already and then the other rows contain ranunculus which are lovely flowers that will um, bloom around I think it's about mid springtime here where I live in the last tray I have sown garlic cloves now this is something I don't usually do and um, what I normally do is direct sow them into the containers or garden beds but as I had mentioned I've got no space so I'm trying to get them started in here I do not know how this is going to go my friend who saw this the other day thinks that um, it's not the best idea because she thinks it could um, disturb the development of the bulb um, I'm not sure I'll probably put these in as a bit of an experiment and then also in a couple of weeks direct sow some cloves too I'll let you know how it goes well I've just come back outside I had to pop in for about an hour or so because it was pouring down rain it's finally stopped for a few minutes so I'm gonna take this opportunity to say goodbye for now thank you for watching and again oh my goodness thank you for all of your support it's incredible I cannot believe that over 6,000 of you are following me along on my gardening journey here on YouTube thank you uh, it means the world to me and I'll see you all again next Friday.